Baku, the capital of the Republic of Azerbaijan, is a very modern and sophisticated city in the Caucasus region, which has grown rapidly over the last 31 years and enjoys large oil and gas reserves. In 1918, the Azeri Democratic Republic was created. Two years later, they were conquered by the Soviets until 1991, when they restored their independence, as is the case in the neighboring country of Iran. But its constitution does not declare an official religion, and the government defines itself as a secular one. It's hard to imagine how the peaceful streets of Baku are transformed frequently into the scene of secret wars, where politicians, generals and spies from different countries are its major protagonists. Azerbaijan has rather problematic neighbors, especially Vladimir Putin's Russia in the north and Ayatollah Ali Khamenei's Iran in the south. Yet its main historical enemy is another neighbor, Armenia, a country with a Christian majority that has clashed with Azerbaijan in two major wars, costing thousands of victims. In the first war of Nagorno-Karabakh in 1991, Armenia, backed by Russia, managed to conquer 10,000 square kilometers in the border zone, a region the size of Lebanon. The official objective, to create a buffer zone. For Azerbaijan, 2020 was the year of victory. In the Second Karabakh War, President Ilham Aliyev's army reconquered all areas occupied by the Armenians only to find dozens of villages and small towns completely destroyed and booby-trapped. Such was the case in the Khoda Afarin area, just a few meters from the Iranian border, on the banks of the Arax River. In this scenario, Iran supported Armenia and Israel supported Azerbaijan. Armenia seized our lands and it took a huge heroic effort for our army to win them back in the last war. And the Azerbaijani people know that during this war, Iran was on the side of Armenia. So you can understand these unpleasant feelings, not towards the people, but towards the Iranian regime to pursue such a policy. The actions of this mode are just weird. Let me explain in a few words what I mean. Iran reproaches Israel, it seems, from the point of view of orthodox Islam. But where was Iran for 30 years when Armenia, violating all international laws, occupied Azerbaijani lands, including near the Iranian border? Why did Iran remain silent then? The ceasefire was finally achieved by Vladimir Putin. At the liberation celebrations in Baku, the army unveiled the offensive drones it had acquired from Israel and which caused many casualties among Armenian forces. One of the strong men in the Baku government is Hikmet Gadjiev, President Aliyev's top advisor and his foreign policy strategist. He claims that Israel was one of the first countries that recognized Azerbaijan independence in 1991 and delivers news that angers Tehran. Upon the appeal uh, of uh, President of Azerbaijan, National Parliament and Mili Majlis of Azerbaijan has adopted the decision to open a full-fledged embassy of the Republic of Azerbaijan in the State of Israel. And we do think that with an opening of Azerbaijan embassy in Israel, we will be able and to manage to bring to even qualitatively new level uh, of Israel-Azerbaijan strategic partnership. Nevertheless, our relations were always uh, excellent, but I think that there is an immense potential for developing of comprehensive cooperation between two countries in many different spheres. And so far we are successful, but we'll continue based on the success stories to reach new horizons in our bilateral cooperation. The closer the strategic relation between Baku and Jerusalem is, the more Tehran threatens both countries. In a video broadcast by the Islamic Republic of Iran, it is clearly defined that the path to the Holy Mosque of Al-Aqsa in Jerusalem passes through the capital of Azerbaijan. It is the first time that Tehran has threatened the two countries, saying, you are digging your grave. Anyone who defies Iran will be destroyed. Tehran also attacks Israel's new Arab partners that support the Abraham Accords, the United Arab Emirates, Bahrain, Morocco, and even Saudi Arabia. 
But not everything is songs and rhetoric. This is one of the most explosive borders in the world. On this side, we are in Azerbaijan, which is a secular Muslim country, uh, a strategic ally of Israel. And there we can see the flag of the Islamic Republic of Iran, who defines the US and Israel, the big Satan and the little Satan. According to Iranian hymns, the road to Jerusalem passes through the allies in Baku, the capital of Azerbaijan. In October 2022, the Iranian army decided to launch an act of intimidation against Azerbaijan, accusing its northern neighbors of being agents of Israel. Thousands of Iranian soldiers crossed the Araks River on the border between the two states with tanks, fighter planes, helicopters and military trucks. The Iranian army also dropped hundreds of paratroopers over the border area. Its spokespersons shared dozens of videos of military maneuvers and showed time and time again the true target of their missiles. The Jewish state's Star of David. Tehran points to the growing ties between Baku and Jerusalem. We are training at the crossing of the Arax River on the border with Azerbaijan so that they will take us seriously. We do not accept the presence of Zionists next door. Many of the military drills took place on the Iranian side of the river, but at times there were air and ground infiltrations within Azerbaijani territory. Azerbaijan President Ilham Aliyev responded to Iranian generals with a tweet that enraged Tehran. A photo of the leader of Azerbaijan embracing an Israeli Herop-type kamikaze drone. Azerbaijan bought the Sky Striker and LoRa drones from Israeli companies Elbit and Israel Aerospace Industries. Mr. Sne, you were the architect of this alliance between Israel and Azerbaijan. How did it happen? I recognized the, and identified the importance of friendly Azerbaijan given its very close proximity to, to Iran and the fact that most of the, uh, of the Iranians, a big part of them to be more precise, are Azeris. And I think that the world, I saw at the time that this is a good chance for us to establish a strong, sound bridge between Israel and Azerbaijan. During our journey along the 700 kilometers border, we saw other Israeli technologies being used to surveil the Iranian side. For example, high precision cameras and very sophisticated electronic sensors. According to several sources, these systems support operations conducted by special units and Israeli secret agents who infiltrate Iran to fight against its nuclear project in a delicate, surgical fight. According to the international press, Israel permanently maintains pilots of its air force in Azerbaijan, as well as several F-35 fighter jets the fifth generation of combat aircraft considered to be the most sophisticated on the planet. Following the Iranian drills, an F-35 apparently infiltrated Iranian airspace to assess the efficiency of its anti-aircraft systems. Iran is very concerned with the growing relation between Azerbaijan and Israel. They talk about it like this. Oh, Azerbaijan wants to be friends with Israel, established good relations with it. They say as if good relations with Israel are bad in themselves. I had the opportunity to tell them when I met them, listen, our relations with Israel and Jewish people go back to time immemorial. What do you want from us? What is the content, the practical side of the alliance between Israel and Azerbaijan? Oil versus weapons? The alliance is based on, on three pillars. Two historic and emotional, one geopolitical. Azerbaijan is a post-Soviet republic that had never, never treated the Jews in a bad way. On the contrary, Jews in Azerbaijan 
always enjoyed a very equal and respectable status. The second thing is that the Azeri people took a major role in the combat against Nazi Germany. Hundreds of thousands of Azeris who went to the war against Hitler, what they called the Great Patriotic War, did return home. They fell in the battlefield in uh, Europe and uh, in, in Germany. And this is something that a Jew can never forget and remain always grateful to the contribution of Azerbaijan to the defeat of the Nazis. Military relations between Azerbaijan and Israel are getting closer by the minute. Between 2016 and 2020, 69% of Baku's weapons, drones, and electronic systems were purchased in Israel. Almost one-fifth of Israeli war material exported is sent to President Aliyev's country. Roman Gurevich is an Israeli political analyst born in Baku who focuses on relations between the two countries. <laughs> In the state of Israel, we receive about 40% of the fuel from Azerbaijan. Azerbaijan receives our technologies, and we have very important strategic issues in common. At the beginning of the 20th century, Baku was already the world capital of oil production. A century ago, half of the world's oil was produced in Azerbaijan. In addition, during the communist era, in the 1930s, the dictator Joseph Stalin decided to increase production to the maximum level. After the break of the Second World War, Hitler's birthday cake did not leave room for doubts. The goal, to conquer the Caspian Sea and the cherry on the cake, the city of Baku. The Nazis didn't succeed. That also contributed to the victory of the Allies since 75% of all the oil of the Red Army during the war was from Azerbaijan. Baku's government claims its coalition with Israel is not directed against anyone. But for the regime of the Ayatollahs, it is very hard to see how a country with a Muslim majority and totally Shia maintains such deep ties with the Jewish state, Iran's most hated enemy. We are in favor of a strong, independent, secular Azerbaijan. And this is the basis why we are, on, why we are together. On that, build, on, on that base, we build the practical things which are important. Oil from Azerbaijan to Israel, Defense equipment from us to them, very important. And uh, I hope that it will be more and more people to people and cultural relations, except the energy and, and, and defense. But the, the, but the basis is very, very sound. The first president of Azerbaijan, Heydar Aliyev, father of the current president, designed the new alliance with Israel which remains to this day and has Tehran as a common rival. In 2016, Israeli arms sales were estimated to be worth 4.85 billion US dollars. President Aliyev decided that the former Soviet Republic will become the first Shiite Muslim state to open a diplomatic mission in Israel. In recent weeks, Baku's secret services have managed to dismantle an Iranian spy network in the capital. Three agents from Tehran received information from several local citizens with whom they met in a clandestine form. Iranian spies regularly paid for their services. Azerbaijan's security services claim that the ultimate goal of this network is to radicalize the country and contribute to the creation of an Islamic State following the model of the Ayatollahs. The president of Azerbaijan declares that religion is like an iceberg. Much of it is hidden underwater.
The second war took place two years ago in 2020, after an Armenian provocation when two senior officers of the Azerbaijan army were killed. The result was that Azerbaijan reacted and liberated almost all of the occupied territory. When Armenians occupied Azerbaijan, the Iranians didn't threaten Armenia. They chose to threaten Azerbaijan now, after liberating this territory. It's a very strange thing and a very strange alliance, but they feel fear. Azerbaijan is stronger after this victory, and with the rapprochement between Israel and Turkey, Iranians are under pressure. Instead of building good ties between neighbours, Iran is creating problems for the whole world. So you expect, sir, that this regime will be finished, the regime of Iran? I don't expect that. Their policy makes it difficult to predict any prospects for the future. Sometimes it seems that they cannot live without difficulties. In the destroyed areas of Karabakh, the Baku government is trying to resettle thousands of refugees. That's why they are building the first smart cities, which are still pilot projects. Refugees resulting from the war with Armenia are settled in areas that were completely destroyed. One of the problems is that the border areas are completely mined. Special army units and civilian companies try to clear the land from booby traps, but this is a never-ending job. How long this demining process is going to take? It is difficult to predict exactly the time frame of the mine clearance process because it is associated with a large number of surprises. There are a lot of mines and various traps here. When we are working on mine clearance, it is impossible to predict everything. There are many difficulties and dangers at every step. In Azerbaijan, these camps are defined as souvenirs of war. The two armed conflicts between Azerbaijan and Armenia exist in a delicate ceasefire. And there are those who say that there aren't two without a third. But this tense situation is further complicated by Iran's nuclear race, which seems closer than ever to having enough uranium to build a nuclear bomb. For Iran to have Israeli agents on its borders as allies of Azerbaijan is like having a knife to its throat. On the other hand, the Jewish state will do anything to prevent the Ayatollahs from carrying out their apocalyptic threats. It is like a three-cushion billiard game, if not more. Enrique Zimmerman, I-24 News, in Khoda Farin, in the border of Iran. Thank you very much for being here. Azerbaijan's decision to open an embassy in Israel after three decades of lower level ties not only makes history as the first Shiite Muslim country to do so, but it also proves to be a major asset for both countries, in particular with dealing with a nation that's considered a dual enemy like Iran. Absolutely. And I think that Iran is really the reason of this alliance between Israel and Azerbaijan, which is huge. It's really important. It's strategic for both countries. I think it's this opening of the embassy in Israel is the result of a very long process. It's also a way of saying to Tehran, guys, we have a new ally, we have a new friend in the last years, but we, are, we want to go all the way. Not only the Abraham Accords countries that are joining this agreement and that are opening embassies in Israel, we will do it also. And in a way, it's a message for the Iranians, but it's also a way of saying to Israel that they want more. They want more relations. I think they improved their strategic situation in their area of the world, which is quite problematic. I was in the 700 kilometers of the border between Azerbaijan and Iran, and I saw many things on the other side. 
in the Iranian side, there were exercises, maneuvers that I tell about in, in the report that are quite threatening for Azerbaijan. So they want Israel as a friend, and that's exactly what's happening now. And touching on that exact point, it's, it's no secret that having an enemy like Iran is a relatively powerful enemy. When you were there, were the Azeris concerned at all with making an enemy out of Iran? Yes, it's one thing that they've got better relations with Israel and both countries see it as a, a tightening of forces against a powerful enemy, but were they concerned at all? Absolutely, they are very concerned. And, and I think there were also these two wars they had against Armenia in the last 30 years that uh, in a way contributed to this alliance with Israel. Because 30 years ago they had a war when the Russians supported the Armenians and they lost. They lost 20% of their territory, which is incredible because it's like 10,000 square kilometers. It's the territory like, like in a way, the Lebanese territory. It's half of Israel. So they lost it and one million people, they say, became refugees, Azeris. So now, two years ago, in the second Karabakh war, they won because of Israeli technology. I think the Israeli military technology helped them to, to defeat their enemies, in this case Armenia, but they also have the Iranian threat. So they send a message to Iran saying now we have new technologies, we have Israel. Uh, the Azeri president even hugged an Israeli drone in a picture. In a way, it's a kind of psychological war showing that this alliance is really deep and important and that they, they mean business in this uh, relation with Israel. Another geopolitical player here, we have to talk about Russia in this picture, in particular with regards to Nagorno-Karabakh, but also because Azerbaijan and Israel both tend to have, at least on the surface, pretty decent relations with Moscow. So. Does the closening or at least the tightening of their relations somehow impact Moscow? Are we expecting it to change now that Moscow is dealing with its own war as opposed to two countries like Azerbaijan and Israel that also have wars with their regional neighbors? I think Moscow is quite busy now. So I don't see, I don't foresee any reaction to, to this new diplomatic step, the opening of the embassy here. But I think the Russians are very attentive. They, they follow this situation they, very closely. And I think exactly like the Iranians, they are there. They are in the picture. They are in that frame. They, they still keep their alliance with the, with the Armenians. And I think Israel must take them into account in any uh, new strategic and geopolitics in that region of the world. Absolutely. It sounds like there's a lot of moving pieces of the puzzle, but that seems to be the case a lot of the times with the complexities in the Middle East, but also moving more towards Central Asia and now obviously towards Russia. Enrique Zimmerman, thank you so very much for being here in studio to talk about this. Thank you very much, Batia. And that's all for this edition of High Definition. I'm Batia Leventhal. Thank you so very much for watching.